What is up, gang? Andrew with Pride. Today, we're going to be answering three questions all about deadlifting from some listeners just like you. These are, do you always need to have a neutral spine? This applies to deadlifting and other exercises. Um, Does the cue squeezing an orange to your side actually have some relevance to deadlifting? I actually have some insight on that because I don't think it necessarily is, but why? And this final one is, is deadlifting an effective way to build muscle? And that answer might actually shock you because it really shocked me when I thought about it more. So let's get to it, guys. All righty, what is going on, guys? Andrew with Pride. We are going to be answering two questions that I got, one on TikTok, one from an actual client. Um, or former client, actually. Um, Yeah, I guess let's just get straight into it, guys. Um, If you you ever do have questions, by the way, uh, and you ask them on TikTok, I'll actually do um, a little physical reply like I did with this first one. Um, But this question was, uh, when you're deadlifting, should you pinch your arms to your sides like you're squeezing an orange? Um, oh, my, my TikTok, by the way, is um, at Andrew PFM. I post a lot of stupid shit on there. A lot of it is sarcastic. A lot of it uh, is very obscene. So there's your disclaimer. That is not all fitness information. A lot of it's stupid shit. But this question got asked by a friend named Drew on TikTok. So that question of pinching an orange to your side. Everybody's heard some variation of this question where it's, you know, squeeze your arms, spread your lats, um, you know, pinch uh, your armpits closed so you can't even fit a finger through there. All these things are like it's I mean, whatever the cue is that works for you, that's actually going to help you to get the lats engaged, to really pin the body or pin pin the back tightly and keep that rigidity in the spine. Um, Whatever that cue is for you is probably the best cue. I personally don't like the orange one, not because it doesn't work, but because in my experience, it leaves, it leaves a few more questions, um, or a few other components as far as deadlifting goes kind of out of that equation. So the way that I personally like to explain it is, um, so for those of you who are watching, you can see this, but I'm going to explain it for those who are just listening. Um, the inside ditch of the elbow, right? When you, if you just put that flat on a table right now, you can still twist your elbow and shoulder, right? So you can point the ditch of your elbow downward. You can point the ditch of your elbow upward. You can create that rotation, right? So what you, what you'll notice if you do this properly is when you place your hand flat, if you rotate the ditch of the elbow upward, you'll feel your lats and upper back and some of the shoulder engaged to tighten that shoulder and to basically keep the, keep the shoulders and the upper back rigid. Um, when you're deadlifting, in my experience, that is one of the most important cues is by keeping that torque, um, in the arms and in the upper back, because the most likely I'll put, I'll put it this way. You've got two major areas that you're going to fuck your deadlift up. You're going to round your upper back or you're going to round your lower back. And that cue of keeping that tension in the elbow is one of the easiest ways to, or not keeping that tension in the elbow, but keeping that torque where you've got the ditch of the elbow pointing forward is going to pin the shoulders back. And I've got a much better, um, you know, visual, um, aid to this. In fact, I'll, um, I'll, I'll shoot you it and you can just clip the little thing out of it. So here, I'll just put a little visual piece right here. Sorry for anybody who's listening. Um, <laughs> it might get a little repetitive here, but anyway, um, in fact, you know what? Just just go ahead and put the put the video up next to it. Don't put the audio over it. So just have it there so people can see it. And I'll just keep talking through it. Um, but yeah, so you can see what I'm talking about, where it's twisting the elbows um, so that that ditch is pointing forward. It creates that upward chest. It creates that rigid um, upper back. You're just way more stable. And as the weight gets heavier and heavier and heavier, you're going to end up losing that tension at the upper back or the lower back. This is one of the easiest ways to make sure that you're controlling for loss of tension in the upper back. Now. To go off of that question, the next one that I got is from, where are we? It is from Casey. How important is a neutral spine? I think you and I have talked about this too. Yeah. So it depends in regard to what, 
you know, are you lifting an Atlas stone? You're probably not going to be able to keep a neutral spine because you have to grip it with a rounded back. If we're talking deadlifting, a neutral spine is good, but more important than that is locking in whatever position you're going to lift. So if you look at some of the best deadlifters in the world, some of them have a rounded upper back, but they're still able to pull because they don't compromise that position at all. From that initial starting position, they get tight and their spine does not move out of that position, even if it is a slightly rounded back. I'll even say with myself lately, I've begun to have a slightly more rounded upper back and my deadlift is going up significantly quicker. I mean, my, my deadlift feels a lot tighter. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I really like lifting with that slight round now because I'm able to feel a lot more tension. I'm able to pull a lot more weight and it's made my position for my deadlift better. But if your goal is not to have an extremely high deadlift, your goal is just to have a func- have functional movement um, and you know feel at low risk for injury, then a neutral spine is hugely important. You want to be able to uh, you want to be able to build that endurance in the erectors of the spine so that you're able to stay upright in your day to day. So that if you're working on a computer, you're not always slouching. If you're um, you know, doing a lot of manual labor, you're not slouching when you're carrying stuff, whatever it may be. You want to develop that through corrective exercise. So if that is holding a PVC pipe on your spine while you're doing rows or while you're doing deadlifting or, um, you know, any kind of pulling movement, really, that's a really effective way to get that, get that tension built into your spine to where your posture is correct and you're able to hold it for extended periods of time. But again, if you are a elite level power lifter, it's probably not going to look perfect. You might be lifting with a slightly rounded back and that's okay. As long as those people are still, um, avoiding injuries. And, uh, oh, you know what? I did just remember, I actually did get one other question mixed in here. I can't remember who asked it, but it was how effective is deadlifting for building muscle. And I think this probably actually comes from a TikTok that I saw where somebody was like, deadlifting is not a good way to build muscle. And, I would be inclined to to agree, actually. Deadlifting is not a very good way to build muscle. It is a good way to get muscles active, but you don't necessarily build a lot of muscle from it. If you look up some of the, you know, some of the I don't even know how to word this. I guess some of the some of the younger people who are deadlifting really, really heavy. So we're talking like 18 to 24, there, there's kids that weigh less than me that are deadlifting like a hundred pounds more than I am right? So why is that? It is because it's partially mechanics. Uh, it is partially just how your body is able to recruit. It is how your central nervous system is able to fire. You you can deadlift a shitload of weight without having that much visible muscle. Where I disagree with this claim of it's not an effective way to build muscle is something that you will see with every single person who can deadlift really, really heavy is that they've got a very thick mid back. So those are the muscles that um, if you slouch over real quick and put your hands at your middle back and lift the head and chest up, you'll feel those muscles turn on. Those muscles get an outrageous amount of activation, but that is also probably going to be the most load they will ever feel. You will never be, I I mean, someone who can deadlift 400 pounds, let's say, you're probably not going to be squatting that much. You are probably not going to be rowing that much. The most load that your erectors will ever be under is when you are deadlifting. It also happens to be a an isometric deadlift. You are not rounding your back and then extending the spine again. It is just one long isometric. And as we know, the most effective ways to build muscle are eccentrics or the negative portion, an isometric or the hold, and a concentric or the positive, right? So if you're lifting 400 pounds in an isometric lift, are you going to build a lot of the muscles that are isometrically holding that 400 pounds? Fuck yes. Deadlifting is the best way that I have built my mid back, but I do not see much in any other way. So again, unfortunately, this question, it depends. Every question depends because there are people who build muscle really effectively doing this. There are people who will not build shit for muscle. Like, I mean, I have a video of the first time I deadlifts at 405 and I mean, I was probably way less muscular than I am right now. And right now I think I have like a mid 400 deadlift, but I also haven't really been training it. So yeah, those were all actually really good questions. And I like that they all kind of centered around deadlifting. So that was neat. 
Um, but yeah, guys, if you have any questions, you can find me on Instagram, uh, TikTok at Andrew PFM. You can find me on YouTube, Pride Fitness and Movement. Um, and yeah, I guess as one more little thing, um, I got so many DMs and so much feedback about the men's mental health episode. I think that was episode 27. And um, I just want to say thank you, everybody who heard that episode, who shared that episode. Um, I really do appreciate it. It was, it was great to hear from a lot of you guys getting DMs and, you know, hearing what your experience has been with, um, you know, as, as a, a male going through that and also as um, some of the females who experienced a partner who were going through like severe depression. So thank you guys so much, everybody that reached out. I loved hearing from you. So until next time, guys, my name is Andrew with Pride Fitness and Movement. We'll see you later.